or uh, some kind of material that you could use for a rubbing. It needs to be able to cover paper. So I'm using a small piece of pastel, a charcoal or a crayon would work just fine. Like a Crayola crayon? Uh, a Crayola crayon will be okay. It's, um, Crayola doesn't come off that well because they're wax based, but it, you can make it work. Another thing that'll work is eyeshadow. If you have a really ugly color of eyeshadow that you don't mind using or something that's powdery. Um, I expect this class will take about an hour and a half. If, if you don't finish, then the instructions are pretty simple. So I'll take you through the process and you can set it aside and finish it later. So if, if some of you run out of time, I included some printed instructions as well in the kit. Hi, Rita. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How was your time with your son, Sean? Well, he's actually stuck in the background with me right oh, now. Oh, <laughs> honey. <laughs> Oh, so we're so we're you, camping he's at home. I'm so glad he's at home with you. Me too. We're we're not at home. We're camping at Lake Apopka. Oh, super. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go through the instructions first. I know there's a bunch of people who are signed up and maybe logging on. It's 12:30, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, before I begin, I would like to thank Clearwater Public Library and the lovely and well-organized Amber Bryce, who is the adult services librarian who makes these happen. So let's give her a round of applause. Yay, Amber! Yay, Amber! Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank guys. Thank you. And we may have the special treat of convincing Amber to paint with us today. <laughs> Um, before we begin, I'm going to go over the materials first and then the instructions. The most important thing is that you need to have a picture printed out on paper. The picture can be black and white. It can be any animal. And then you'll need something to paint on. So either a piece of cardboard or a canvas. And I included a... a materials list. So I think folks would have that plus there's kits. Uh, in addition, a very small piece of charcoal or pastel or a crayon will work in a pinch if you don't have any of the others. And if you got a kit, this was taped to the instructions. So look on the instructions page. In the kit, you would also have acrylics. Um, mine are handily packed in an empty egg carton. <laughs> and it's basically the primary colors of red, yellow, blue, plus black and white. And from those colors, we'll be mixing a lot of other colors. Um, I included a sheet that looks like this. This is the paint by numbers portion. And I included a sheet of instructions that looks like this. So just to go over the instructions real quick, we're going to start by evaluating our black and white photocopy. And we're going to decide how to number it. And that's where the paint by numbers part comes in. The second, we're going to compare the numbers on the black and white photo with the numbers on the color as value chart, which is the other piece of paper. That will help us decide what colors will go where. Then we're gonna start working um, from dark to light. In painting, you always go from dark to light. So we're gonna start off with our number fives and work our way backwards to number ones. And I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through this process um, every step of the way and answer questions and help you mix colors and so forth. Now, a couple of quick tips. Don't be afraid of color. 
and don't try to get too realistic. The more colorful you make this, the better it will look. And try to think of some of the colors in your house. Do you have a lot of teal or aqua or orange or blues or colors like that? Those are the kinds of colors that you want to use. You want to use what's in your decor. So that way you'll come up with something pretty that you want to hang. Um, we're going to be using the black and white very sparingly. So you're not going to be having to mix too much. Before we begin, does anyone have any questions? You may have to unmute yourself. Okay, wonderful. So if you do have a question at any point, unmute yourself and pipe up and I'll be happy to answer. For now, I'm going to go to an easel view and show you how to evaluate your photo. So I'm gonna switch the view. Okay. So looking at this photo, the first thing you want to notice is where are the darkest areas? Those are gonna be really dark. Now on our sheet, the darkest is number five. So we're gonna put a number five on the spots that look like the darkest dark. So on my cute little dog, I see the darks here in the corners of her eyes, the pupils up here, the collar. So everywhere where you see something super dark, the dark is dark, number it five. <laughs> Cause in tight. Thank you. <laughs> now, if you're not sure what a number five looks like, I went ahead and printed out my color as value chart in black and white and in color. And when you look at the fives in black and white, you can see that they all look the same. They're all pretty dark. In color, they're all different because they have a different hue to them. But you want to get something that's as dark as the number five. Once you've numbered all of the fives, then we're going to look at the fours. Now, the fours are one step lighter than the fives. So the fours in the case of, of my subject here would be things like the dark parts of the ears, parts of the blankets, parts of the fur, So anything that's one step lighter than the five will be a number four. Okay, next we're moving to three. Now three is right in the middle of the value scale. So it's a middle color. It's not a light, it's not a dark. It's right smack dab in the middle. So things on mine, that would be a number three, would be things like the top of her head, this bit of cloth, which is slightly different than this. Here's a three, here's a three. So go around and number everything three 
that smack dab in the middle. Okay, when you're ready, move to the twos. Now two is not quite as light as a one, so it's not the lightest thing. It's next to the lightest thing. So the twos are gonna be right between the threes and the ones. So it may be helpful to look at what is the lightest thing and go ahead and put a one on that. And then everything else that's left is going to be a two. Okay, so if you're caught up, put your thumbs up like this. That's good. Excellent. Thank you, ladies. Excellent. Thank you, Rita. Okay, if you don't have your camera on, then I'm going to assume that you're caught up. Thank you. Terrific. So now you have lots of little numbers all over the face of your cute little fur baby. So we're gonna do something that's a secret technique that only artists know. So after I tell you this technique, I'm gonna have to swear you to secrecy. I'm kidding. Uh, actually, it's something that was developed by Michelangelo when he was painting the Sistine Chapel. And many of the artists in the Renaissance used it to paint the big murals. And it's been passed down through the ages. It's called transfer. And what would happen is the artist would perfect a drawing in their studio and then transfer it to a wall to do a mural. And it's the same technique that I'm gonna teach you. Now, artists like Michelangelo didn't wanna spend all their time making mistakes in public. So they made all their mistakes in their studio, perfected the drawing completely, took that drawing, which was back then called a cartoon, then put charcoal on one side of it and transferred it to the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And then they had their little minions come and paint it. So we're going to do the same thing except for no minions. So I'm going to turn the camera 
and show you how this technique is accomplished. Now this is where you'll need to have uh, like a piece of charcoal or crayon or something. Now the same photo that we just put all the little numbers on, I'm going to flip that photo around and on the back side of it, I'm taking this charcoal and covering the whole shape of the dog. So I'm just rubbing all over the back of the printed photo. This is why the photo has to be printed on paper. It won't work if you're doing it on uh, a glossy photo or a photo that's that is uh, framed in glass or something like that. You have to be able to get charcoal all on the back. If you have excess charcoal, dump it in the garbage. And then on your canvas, you put the charcoal side against the canvas. So that way, here's the photo, the canvas is behind it, and here's the charcoal. Now, it's very important that you don't use a pencil for this part. Instead, use the back end of a paintbrush or something that isn't going to leave a mark on your photo. You don't want to have too many extra lines on your photo or, or mess up your image. So I'm using the blunt end of a paintbrush and I'm going to start by tracing. I'm pushing down and tracing all of the lines from my photo onto the canvas. Now this is kind of slow and methodical and you want to start by going around the outside and never move the photo. You don't want to pick it up, don't look underneath, resist the urge, leave the photo alone, don't touch it, don't move it, and just keep methodically going around and tracing every line in place. Once you have the outside, then you move toward the inside and start with the nose, the mouth, the eyes, the pupils, the shiny little spot in the pupils. I'm also pushing down pretty hard. I really want to make this transfer. Okay, and then when you're finished, you lift up your photo and you'll see a little ghost image of your pet on the canvas. So it transferred from the back of the picture to the canvas. I'm going to give everyone a minute or two to complete this. If you have a hard time seeing it, you may want to go over it with a pencil. You don't want it to be too dark, just dark enough to see. So what I have on this canvas is plenty dark. You don't need to go any darker than that. Wow, Jennifer, that looks pretty good. 
hopefully you can see it. Isn't that a fun so, time week? So f helpful, Sean. I, I can't get over it. <laughs> now, if you have small children or grandchildren, this is a really fun technique to do with them because they love making animal paintings. So keep all of the instructions and materials and please reuse them with your kids and grandkids. Okay, thumbs up if your canvas is sketched. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, good. Excellent. Yay, Rita. <laughs> awesome. All right, so now we have our canvas and we have our photo, which has all the numbers on it. That photo is the key for the paint by numbers. So we're going to match the numbers that are on the photo with the numbers that are on the color as value sheet. So I'll show you how to do this and we'll start painting. Okay, so the first thing is we're gonna start with number five. This is the darkest dark. And in looking at my photo here, I numbered the nose, the dark parts of the eyes, um, some parts inside the ears and so forth as fives. So I come to this sheet and I see that I have choices for all my fives. So I'm going to start off with a five that looks like this. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in with the black. So for my paint, I take a brush full of black, a brush full of blue, mix them together, and then give it a test. And it's pretty close to the color that I'm looking at. So now I'm ready to paint. So I'm going to use this color everywhere where I put a number five. This might be a good time to tell people you may need a cup of water and some paper towels to rinse out your brush with. That is true. Okay. So the voice of reason that you just heard um, suggests that you have something to clean your brush and also something to wipe excess paint like paper towels and a little cup of water. If you don't have that, go ahead and get it right now. And we're going to take a few minutes and really work on getting all those darks in place. So feel free to go get yourself a cup of water and some paper towels if you don't have them. If you do and you're ready, then just go ahead and start sketching with the very tip of your brush all of the darks. Put all of your dark fives in place. Thank you, Amber. No problem. And I know we had somebody that, that came in pretty late. If while you're painting, maybe you could give her an overview of how to, to sketch it. Okay. Um, so in case you missed how to do a transfer, you make sure that the picture is printed from a printer onto a plain copy paper and then use a charcoal, a pastel, or even a crayon, rub it on the back side of the photo so that you cover the whole photo with it. You place the photo where you want it on the canvas and then using the back end of your brush, not a pencil, you trace every line in place. And you wanna take your time and trace it well and then that's how you get this outline. And the fun thing about this is the outline will be pretty perfect if you follow the photo. And all you have to do is literally paint by numbers and you'll come up with something that looks pretty.
So right now, I'm just putting in the darkest darks. So I've already transferred my image, and I've already numbered all of the shapes on my image from five to one. And those fives are the darkest dark. So on this sheet, it goes from five to one, and you have five being the darkest dark, one being the lightest light, and all the numbers are in between. So we have colors that correspond to different numbers, and that's what we're working on. So starting with the darkest darks, you put all of them in place, and that's what I'm doing now is the number five. So work your way around the whole picture, putting all of your darks in place first. This may be unusual for you if you're not used to painting from dark to light, but this is how most artists make a painting as they start off with the darks, put them in place first, and then build backwards from dark to light. Watercolors are the exception to the rule. They have to start off leaving the light in place and work towards the dark. So what you're doing is the same thing that Michelangelo did painting the Sistine Chapel. You start off with your darks, you have a good strong foundation of darks, and then you work your way back. As you're doing this, experiment with your brush. Use your brush, not like a pencil, but like something that has a feather tip on the end and lightly, lightly stroke the paint. Don't push down hard like you would with a pencil. It's a totally different technique using a paintbrush than it is a pencil or a pen. It takes a little while to get used to, so don't be surprised if you don't have it right away. Just be in the habit of playing be lighthearted about it, and it will come. The more you let yourself play, the easier it'll be to paint. Should we be doing the fives that are in the background or just focused on the animal? That's a great question. You should do all of the fives. So we're working the entire painting at the same time. So every five. So here's some of the vibes in, in the background that I'm doing. Um, by the way, you don't have to do a background. You can just leave the background blank and we'll make it a solid color. The only reason I'm putting some background in here is because it's important to the painting that she be covered up in all of these blankets because that's the kind of dog she is. So if your pet is a cuddly little snuggler, then you might want to have them covered up in blankets too.
Now remember, you're just doing the darkest darks. So these are just the fives. We're gonna work backwards from five to one. When we hit three, we're gonna stop, take a break, and evaluate these paintings. And I'll check them at that time and We'll make some decisions in terms of color and so forth before we go on. So once you have a good pattern of darks in place, then it's time to move to the fours. The fours are one step lighter. On your photo, you should have a whole bunch of fours and they're probably going to be right next to the fives or close to it. On the sheet, you'll notice that you have a bunch of different choices for fours. Most of the fours are purple or violet. So the way you make purple and violet is by mixing a little bit of blue and red. So the violet you get will depend a lot on the blue and the red. So if you're mixing a dark blue, and a dark red. Notice how I mix just a little bit at a time. I never mix a huge amount. So this is a reddish brown or a reddish violet and it's close to the first four that's on the list. This one is a little more uh, red so I would add a touch more red to it. Red has a lot of tinting power, so you don't need to add much to get it to work for you. And you may want to put a little white with it to make it more magenta, if you're looking for magenta. So there's a little white. And that gives it a pinkish kind of look. If you want it to be more blue violet, then you put more blue. And that gives you um, the purple look that you see towards the end. You could use just straight blue, and that's pretty dark. Or you could mix a little bit of yellow and have a blue green, which is also dark. Or you could mix a lot of yellow with it and have a dark green. Yellow has very little tinting power, so it's not gonna change the blue much. The blue is gonna affect the yellow a lot more. So this would be like a four, green. So choose which of these greens you want and you can use all of them. You don't have to limit yourself to one color. You could use four or more colors if you want. I'm going to use some of the blue, like the pure blue. I'm rinsing my brush in between colors and then tapping it on the side. You never want to jab because that splays out the bristles and ruins them. Then when it's tapped, you wipe it on a paper towel and that gives you the point. When I paint, I just dip that point in the paint and I paint with just the point of the brush. I never let the brush get clogged up with paint. You don't want to have paint all the way up here. You want to be able to see some of the bristles. Okay, so now I have some of the blue. And I'm going to find the fours on this cute little dog space. So I see there's a lot of fours right next to 
her face in the background. Paint that in. Put a little over here. So I'm just going to work my way around and paint everything that should be a four. I'm also going to mix it up and have some of the fours on her face purple. Like this. And some of the fours um, pure blue and so forth. That way she's going to be a lot more colorful a lot more interesting and that's the name of the game is you really want to keep this portrait colorful pretty engaging and have some of the colors from your house in it so think colorful thoughts make it as colorful as you can don't be afraid you're not going to ruin it you can always repaint once it dries so have some fun with it Now also try to be brushy and painterly because most fur isn't one color in one area. It's not like a polka dot with hard edges. Instead, it's more like a, a soft brush stroke. So try not to let your brushwork have hard edges. Try to keep it soft and fur-like.
Okay, so make sure that your fours are dark. You want to keep them dark. We're still working in the darks. So don't let them get too light. You want to keep your fours very close to the five. So on our value scale, the four and the five are close together. The five is the darkest dark. The four is just one step lighter. So we're going to wait one more minute and then move to the threes. So start wrapping up your fours. I'm pushing you because this is the point where a lot of beginners are looking at their work and judging and saying, oh, this is horrible. This was a terrible idea. I can't do it. And you really have to just push through that and continue to work through it. Every painting goes through an ugly phase. And the the trick of the artist is to not let it stay there, just to keep painting and push it through the ugly phase to the beautiful phase. So that's what we're doing. We're pushing past some of the darks and towards the middle values. And then once you get past the threes, you're more than halfway done. So finish up your fours, suspend your uh, judgment until you're at the twos and the ones. Then you can start looking for things to fix. For right now, just keep working. Okay, so once you've made it past the fours, now we're moving to the middle values or the threes. So notice on your three row, you have a whole bunch of different colors. Most of these colors are oranges, reds, greens, and blues. So I'm gonna show you how to mix each one. We're gonna start off, get this out of the way real quick. Start off with that beautiful orange. Now orange is always a mixture of a small amount of red and a whole lot of yellow. Yellow doesn't have as much tenting power. So the red will quickly overtake it and then you'll have an orange. So here's the orange. And see how bright that is. Notice that it's right in the middle. It's not dark like the fours, it's not light like the twos. Next to it is a blue, but the blue is more of a sky blue. So to get that blue, we'll take the regular blue, which is ultramarine, and mix it with a little bit of white. I always try to take it from the side and not the middle, so I don't pollute all my white. Okay, so the blue that I'm coming up with is gonna be a little bit more purple than what's on the sheet, but you get the idea. So that's just blue with a little bit of white. Now, if you add a little bit of yellow to this, 
that will give you some of that turquoise that you see a few places down. So that's that turquoise. Turquoise doesn't come too well from the ultramarine. Okay, so right next to the blue is red. And this is just pure red. So you don't have to mix it with anything. So the pure red is, um, this is a cadmium red medium. So the pure red is pretty bright and that's about a three. Or you can put a little bit of white in with it and make it more of a pink, which is the last one. So that pink is just a tiny bit of white mixed with pure red. And then the last color is green. And to get that green, we're gonna be using a whole lot of yellow because yellow, again, doesn't have much tinting power. Put a touch of blue and it will give you a green. And depending on the type of blue you're using, if it's a, a darker blue, which is ultramarine, then you'll get more of a khaki green. This is the green. Uh, you can lighten it by putting a lot more yellow or even a little bit of white. So those are your choices for threes. Now the threes on the photo are all middle values. So on my threes, you can see them here in her furrowed brows. There's a lot in the comforters. Um, her fur is pretty much a three everywhere. And I think for the three, I'm going to choose orange. So I'm going to make sure that I'm starting off with a clean brush. and then mix the orange. And I'm just mixing exactly what I'm gonna use. I'm not mixing a huge amount. Otherwise you tie up all your paint. So I'm mixing a small amount of orange. By the way, if you paint at home, you can fill up an egg crate like this with your paint, stick it in the freezer and freeze it and it'll be fine for another use. So that's a good way if your child loses interest quickly but wants to continue the painting another time, just put the paint in the freezer. Okay, so now I have the three and I'm gonna put it everywhere. I see a three. Now already, it's going to start really popping because the three is so much different than the four. You see those bright colors start to really pop. Again, you can use multiple threes, doesn't have to be the same three. I'm going to use this three as a fur color so that I'll have it everywhere where I see a three on her fur. And then I'll probably use a red or another color for other, other threes.
Um, excuse me, on number three, is that a yellow green? Uh, yes, you can make a, a yellow green. Basically, it's a green like this, and you can put a little more yellow. Don't confuse it with the two. There's a really bright yellow green on the two. Okay. So you Thank want it you. to be more of a true green because it's a middle value. Right. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay, when you are finished with your threes, we're going to do a little check-in. So stop right there and we'll evaluate these paintings. At this point, they're probably going to be pretty colorful. So don't worry if it isn't exactly what you're looking for just yet. You're still in process. So spend judgment. Um, whoever's finished, unmute yourself. Make sure your camera's on. And we'll take a look. Okay, Jennifer, would you like to show your work? Yeah. Um, so I just kept going, going. I have to leave early. Uh, so this is what okay. it used to look like. Oh, All right, hold on one second, Jennifer. I'm going to see if I can't put you in the spotlight. There we go. Oh, yay. Yay. <laughs> All right, so can you hold it up? This is what my cat's supposed to look like. Oh, uh, he's like, it's adorable. What my cat looks like. Oh, Jennifer, that's so cool. I love it. It's like a psychedelic cat. <laughs> I forgot to draw like where her arm was. So she's kind of like blobby. Mm -hmm. that's I so love cool. it. I just love it. I do too. Um, Jennifer, I have no problem with it. Only suggestion I would make is make sure you have pupils in the eyes that are dark. Yeah. How so do you those use need a limey green, like a like number two or three. They look kind of similar, but one has maybe has black in it. Or mm -hmm. well, n it wouldn't be black. It would be like mostly yellow and uh -huh. a little bit of blue. And it depends on the blue. If you're using the ultramarine, it may not look so limey. Okay. What so, kind of blue do you recommend for like a limey green? Um, cerulean, oh. or, yeah, a phthalo or a cerulean. Okay. You can make a limey green by putting a little bit of white in with the blue as well. So try a, a touch of white. Okay, that's good work. Let's give her a round of applause. Yay! Yay, congratulations. We'll check back in with you at the end. So who else would like to show their work? Adrian, are you ready? I'm not quite done yet. I'm still on my threes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I want to see it at your threes. I'm going to put you in the spotlight. Nobody should be finished yet, by the way. It should just be up to the threes. Okay, so. so this is my cat, Lily, one of my cats. Oh, hi, Lily. She has a lot of numbers. Um, this is where I am right now. Okay, that's good. I love the cool colors. Very pretty. All right, terrific. So can I see the picture of Lily, the photo? Okay, good. So her fur is mostly twos. Yeah. And and the part on her nose is a one. Yeah, it's like, it's a bunch of four, three, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so for the chest and the other part, I suggest you use something warm and maybe a yellow, like a pure mm -hmm. yellow or orange, and that will mm -hmm. contrast nicely with some of the cool colors that you have on the rest of her fur. Oh, okay. Very pretty. Can't wait to see the finished piece. Okay, thank you. Um, who else is ready to show their work? Okay, Despina, I am putting you in the spotlight. Hold on a moment. Actually, I'm Kathy. And, oh, Jackie. Uh, <laughs> that's my daughter's. I couldn't figure out how to <laughs> do it off of the account. Okay. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie's Kathy, a little Kathy, easier for me Kathy. to pronounce, so that works. It's Kathy. Okay, hi, Kathy. Okay, so this is my dog, Zali. Oh, and it's, uh, I have a trouble. I'm on, I'm, excuse me. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I have a busy household. They never stop. Okay, so this is my dog, Zali. And uh -huh. as you can see, I had trouble because she's a lot of black. So I had technical trouble as far as trying to, Maybe when I printed it, I should have done it a little bit where it was more contrast. Okay. But 
anyways, this is how far I got because I was a little behind. So I'm kind of like, I'm still on stage uh, five and four <laughs> right uh, now. That's so all right. I don't know, maybe you can give me some suggestions. It's always under the table, Mom. Yes, can you hold up that photo reference again? So Kathy, what I would suggest is make the background a totally different color than the dog. Yeah. So the color, like the, the dog might be purples and okay. make the background greens and blues. You know okay. what I mean? Yes, so yes, that sounds way, good. Yeah, the color can be different than the, uh, the value can be the same. So she'll still be dark. So what should I do with her fur since it's all black? Should I go with all black and then build upon that with different colors? No, instead of using any black, mix yeah. up a dark purple. And so purple. red and green, uh, red and blue to make the purple. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then have a little bit of black in that. I would say the black that you have on there is close enough because it's the nose and the eyeballs. Uh -huh. So instead of going sides for her fur and the background, we're going to go fours. So that way, the nose and the eyeballs will look darker than anything else. Okay. Okay, so right. think purple for the dog, blues okay. and greens for the background. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. That'll be nice. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to show their work? Okay, I see Michelle and then Mercedes. So, Michelle, I'm going to put you in the spotlight first. There you are. Okay, so let's start off with your photo reference. Oh, what a little cutie. And let's see your painting. Aww. Wow. Gosh, that looks so realistic. Are you muted? Okay, can you hear me? I can, much better. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I should have made her, I mean, she's very dark and I made it very dark, but then she has brown and white and a little bit in her face and stuff. So I tried to add the fours a little bit there too. That's good, she looks very realistic. Can you oh, hold up the photo reference again, yeah, please? I wasn't sure about the numbers. I kind of originally did more fives and then I tried to, change it to some more fours and so forth and threes but i make the, the the coloring around her eyes maybe a two or one i don't know i use like a, a purplish for her pupils maybe i should do black for them okay so look at your photo reference for a second mm -hmm. see how the light is hitting one half of her face it looks like the left half of her face or at least my left it could be your right um mm -hmm. There is a light source and on your painting, you don't see it. So I would suggest that you go one step lighter on that half of her face. That's what, in this, this side or, or this yes. side? Yes. No, the half that's in the light. Right here? Uh-huh. Yes. She does that have a little half. brown or something on her face here, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's look at how the light goes all the way around her eye, around her ear. So the whole half of her head is lighter on mm -hmm. the left side than it is on the right side. So you right. want to keep that pattern. Okay. Okay, so I would use oranges, um, reds, mm -hmm. uh, whatever color you used under her chin, that brownish color, that mm -hmm. would be but that will help create a difference between one half of her head and the other and will help make it stand out against her fur on the shoulders. Okay, and what background? She's laying on the couch with like a really light blanket. I don't know if I should just go lighter in her background then. Yeah, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And when you're finished painting her, then whatever paint you have left over, uh, use it for the background and just keep it, you know, big, simple shapes. Okay, <laughs> thanks. That'll be cool. Thank you. Okay, and uh, was it Mercedes, I think was next? Okay, hi Mercedes. Is, hi. is that your cute little dog, big dog? <laughs> so 
Much. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look how fabulous that looks. I love how her expression came through in that tracing. I couldn't believe that. I mean, that is perfect. I love your color choices, the blue and the orange. They just contrast so nicely. So what are you going to do with the chest? Have I you thought? I've, I've already, I thought we were starting to mix and I already mixed up for two, like a real light blue, I thought. I don't know. Okay. I would go light blue, light orange or yellow. Mm -hmm. And that's a two. You're absolutely right. You got a two. And with the background, I would actually do a great big color field. Like just paint the whole background one color. Okay. Maybe and, she's in the grass. I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking green. Yeah. Okay. That would be really pretty. Great minds think alike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. You are off to a masterpiece. That looks gorgeous. Okay. Wonderful. Now, who else would like to show their work? Can I have you look at mine? Is, are you, oh, Amber. Hi. <laughs> Of course. Hold on a second, Amber. I'm putting you in the spotlight. I'm so delighted that you're painting with us. You never get to play. I know. Oh, is that the same kitty that was in the box? So well, this is, yes, it is. <laughs> the cat that you painted <laughs> in the box. So she's a calico, so her coloring is like kind of all over the place. Nice. And, but I got this like weird 80s colors going on. I don't really know what happened, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm a fan, but that's pretty I cool. Think, she is definitely a punk rock kitty. I feel um, like there's a lot of white, you know, a lot of ones and twos here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't really know what color I'm going to use, but I figured I'd fill in maybe the dark later after I put the white where. I, I would do the opposite. Jump in there now and on her fur, use some oranges and blues. Okay. And that'll help break some of the 80s color that you were talking about. Yeah. It'll create texture. And so that'll give the impression of the calico. Should I just repaint all of this blue, you think? No, no. I think okay. that's pretty, as is. And I would just put the oranges and the blues on her shoulders and back and up around her ears. And for a her four or for a five? Um, I would say closer to a four and a three, like the orange would be a three, the blue would be a four, okay. and that will help round out the shape of her head and her shoulders. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Looking good. Okay. So is there anyone else who would like to show their work? It may take me a second to find you. So make sure, oh, was that Jordan? Yep. Um, Jordan, make sure you're unmuted and I'm putting you in the spotlight. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hi. Hi. So this is okay. my cat, Olive. Olive. <laughs> she is so, pretty, so she's kind of like Amber's where she's got kind of splashes of color. And I kind of went with a like a purpley kind of thing, but I think I sort of went very dark with most of it, so. Mm -hmm. Can I see the photo again? Can you hold them up at the same time? Okay. Uh, so Jordan, have you given some thought to the light color? What light color are you gonna use? Uh, I kind of want to stick with the same kind of colors um because I kind of want to put it in my room and I think these kind of colors would go with it so I think sort of like a lighter pink to sort of light the rest of her yes anything that's warm yeah. like a pink or a yellow or an orange yeah. will contrast nicely with that purple yeah and if it has a little bit of white mixed in with it, mm -hmm. it will cover some of the purple. Okay, so yeah. That's what we're looking for. So it, you want to create a halo 
effect mm -hmm. on the cat because the light is hitting Olive yeah. from the front so, and you want to light up that whole part of her. Yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. Thank that you. looks terrific. I can't wait to see it finished. Thank you. Did you see the chat? Um, Amber says that Jordan, your painting reminds me of a Jap block print in a cool, good way. Isn't that nice? <laughs> okay, is there anyone else who would like me to look at their work? Now's your chance. Okay, if I missed you, unmute and tell me. Okay, wonderful. So good work, everyone. And Don't we're. Oh yes. Me, I uh, let me see. If it's something my camera. Okay. I tried to do it, but uh, I didn't like it. So I like I start again. But this is my cat. The problem is I I couldn't have a really good picture. So I had trouble with the um, with the. Um, I forgot the. Name. With the channel, the transfer but with the values, so okay. I don't know how to do it. So I have to do it again. So this is my card, but uh, I really had trouble with the values, and 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 also the picture is not. Let me see. Okay, well the the picture is adorable. Um, the values are a challenge for everyone. You have to teach yourself. Yeah, it's training really, your eyes. Really hard. Yeah. And it takes a while. Uh, so having a photo that has a clear difference between darks is helpful. So that may not be the best photo to work from. You may have to choose one that's- Yeah, I have another one, like a color, but uh, let's see. This, because my print didn't work, I don't know. <laughs> now is this one. I don't know if it does better. Let's compare with this one. Yeah, well, you know, it's depending on what you see. If if it's better for you to be able to see the differences, then that's good. Work with that. Try to work with what you have. Make do with it. Just get the darks in place first, and then that will help. And if you only do three values, it'll still look dimensional. Okay. So, yeah, just keep it simple and try to do just three. Start off with a dark a medium and a light. Okay. And okay. background, what, what color did you suggest? Uh, why don't you do the cat first and then do the background a totally opposite color. So ah, something okay. you would never think of like pure red or orange or something like that. Okay. And, and make it all one color. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I am gonna put myself back in the spotlight. Yay. And now we're going to move to the two. So we're going to start finishing up. Now at this point, you have a pretty established color scheme. So it's time to shake it up a little bit. Now the twos are mostly yellows and light greens. So yellow doesn't have a whole lot of power. So you might want to mix a little bit of white with it. If you use pure yellow, that'll give you a very light color. If you put even the smallest amount of red, that'll give you um, a little more opaque yellow. If you mix some white in with it, that will lighten it up, but it also gives it more coverage. So you're able to cover over so that's what the yellow looks like with a little bit of white. Uh, if you want to have that kind of lime green, then you want to use mostly yellow and a little bit of blue. And this is the lime green, which isn't very limey. And if you put a very small amount of white in with it, then that's going to give you one step lighter on the lime green. So these are examples of two. Now, they're not the only examples. You can also make like a very light blue, whoops, which is not that. 
you know, by using a whole lot of white, very little blue, or even a light purple, light orange, anything that's one step under white. You don't want to have anything that's that light. So for my cute little pup here, I'm going to use pure yellow for the twos. So I'm making sure that I have a clean brush to start off. Dipping into yellow. And then everywhere where I see a two on my sheet, I'm going to give her some yellow. Now, you don't have to use the same two. You can mix it up. Make some light blue and some yellow or some light purple and so forth. So don't think it has to be the same all over. I have to say bye, but I wanted to say thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. And thank you for joining us. And I My do hope you'll play with this technique at home. So I will. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.
Okay, folks, so once you have your twos in place, then we're going to move to the ones. Now, the ones are probably the smallest amount of any um, paint that you'll be using. The ones on mine are really just little dots inside her eyes and maybe a little bit on the top. So on your list, Ones are your lightest lights. So that's anything that you mix with white. And to get some of these white, of these lights, you can use pure white. You can put a little red in with it, get a pinkish color. You can put a little yellow in with it, get a very light yellow. Or you can even put some violet and get a light lavender or purple. Now I want to show you a quick trick. If you're putting highlights in the dog's eyes or a cat's eyes, use the back end of your paintbrush, not the soft end. You dip the back end of the paintbrush in pure white paint like this and then make a dot just with the back end and that'll give you a much more perfect highlight than trying to paint it. So one minute for highlights, and then we'll have a final show. I know everyone has to go. So we'll, we'll do one more minute of painting, and then we'll show off the work.
Okay, folks, as you're finishing up, we went a little bit over time. My apologies. I hope everyone enjoyed this program. If you did, make sure to thank the City of Clearwater and Clearwater Li Public Library for offering programming uh, virtually during times like these. Um, how about let's all show our paintings by putting it up alongside or in front of your face like this. So that way we can see how everyone did. I know you're just wrapping them up, um, but whatever place it's at. Oh my goodness, Kathy, that looks awesome. That's coming together nice. Mercedes, very nice. Love the expression. Very nice. Adrian, that's such a cool cat. That's really coming together. Um, Roxy, that's so real. Michelle, beautiful. Jordan, like that light. Come on, Amber, put it up there. All right. Beautiful work, everybody. Now, I hope that you'll take this technique to heart and try it again and have some fun with it. Um, this is a way to learn how to see values. The more you train yourself to see values, the easier it is to paint from life. So this is good practice, really good practice. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you at the next program. Thank you all for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.